Hello and welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. And uh, today uh, we are joined by a um, fan advisory board member, uh, Paul or Pablo McMonies. Uh, how, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm very well, thank you, Alex McMonies. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it, we should probably clear up straight away if it's not obvious. Um, uh, this is actually my dad, so um, so yeah, uh, this kind of informal sort of chemistry should hopefully come off a little bit in this interview, I guess. But um, yeah. uh, let's but, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Um. So obviously, yeah, we're um. This is about the uh the recent statements that have been put out um by the fan advisory board recently in regards to um. Uh, conversations over the takeover, I guess, and the kind of saga that's going on. Um, but I guess before we get into that, really, um, like I say, you're um, you're coming up to your first year um, on the fan advisory board, like finishing your first year there. Um, what just what have you made of it, really? I guess. Um, well, it, it, at the moment, it's my only year. It's not, uh, you know, I've, I've only been voted on for a year, so I've got to be up for re-election again this summer. So I should should mention that first of all. But um, yeah, it's been um, it's been a challenging year. I think it's fair to say. Um, I, I knew it would be challenging. You know, none of us have joined the fan advisory board because we think everything's great at the club and it's all going swimmingly. So we 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 know we've had problems for the last two seasons, but. I don't think any of us really expected, um, you know, on or off the fab. I don't think any of us only expected to have the season that we've had. So, um, so yeah, it's. I mean, it's been it's been eye opening in a lot of different ways. Um, the it just seems to be one thing after another when we first got going because I say obviously the beginning of the season when it sort of starts just sort of July August. I think the first meeting I attended was in July and I was sort of getting used to it. I've not not really been on anything like this before, um, any kind of committee or, or stuff like that. It's not really used to minutes and meetings and having to put your hand up to speak and all that sort of stuff. So that was a learning curve on that side of things. But um, but yeah, we had all sorts of um, you know things thrown at us. Obviously, the you know the club got sold. Uh, we had the, uh, the the sad tragedy at, at Michael Jones at, um, at Bramley Moor. We had the chairman passing away. So we just had so many. Our, our chairman resigned, Jazz, Jazz resigned as well. So we had lots of things going on with it to start off with. But um, I think things tended to settle down a little bit. And, uh, and hopefully, hopefully we're sort of ending the year fairly strongly, a little bit like the team, really. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, like you say, obviously... Um... Uh, it's it's something that you didn't have like too much experience of going going into it. So, what I guess what you know for anyone who might be watching this who um you know might be thinking of like applying this summer or whatever um what sort of things do you think uh you 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 would say have been like the biggest lessons you've learned this year like that you know isn't isn't quite advertised as 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 part of joining it I guess. Well, well, hardly any of it's advertised. I mean, you know, you can you can go onto the Fab website and you can read up about the uh, the the bullet points about what's expected of the Fab and what they are. But the the headlines of it really are that the Fab meet once a month just as a Fab, and then every quarter we meet with the club, um, um, and and then that's it really. That they're the only sort of you know requirements that you see. But it's it's I mean it's a lot. It's a it's a it, I suppose it, it depends on how much you, you yourself are willing to put into it and how much how much spare time you've got. Because we're all volunteers. Um we are all fan elected as well. There's um there's a a, a lot of uh, we we've connected with another lot of fan advisory boards uh, around the country and we're finding quite a lot of them have actually got like club employees on their fabs and things like that. Um which is which is an odd concept because you know the word fan should imply that they're fans. Um, but um, yeah, it's been, it's been. Um, I don't know really. What would I say? I, I'd, I'd like, I'd like to think that the people that we that 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 join it, I've got some spare time that they are willing to um to to put into trying to make a better club, really. And that's for any fan advisor. It's not just Everton's. Um, uh, you, you sometimes you'll get um. Now, having speak, spoke to some of the other fabs, you know, you'll you'll find that you have sort of you have sort of doers and you have talkers, um, and yeah, and the talkers are all you know valid and useful, and they put their points of view across and things like that. But it's the doers that you really, really kind of want because they say there's there's so much to do. 
you know, every club as well, the other clubs that we've met, you would think that, you know, Everton's got a million different problems. It turns out that every club's got different problems. It's all just at different levels. So even your Man Cities, your Man United's and and, and all the, you know, the, the, the mega, mega rich clubs, you would think, oh, they, they haven't got any problems. No, their fans are moaning like hell about everything. So, um, I think that the any anything I would say about anyone that was that was you know willing to, to to have a look at it and have a go at it is to basically just make sure that you have got enough time to commit to it. Um, it is quite um time consuming. Not trying to put anyone off with it, but um you know there is there is a fair amount to do, especially when you're trying to grow as we are. The, the fab's only been running for two years, still quite a fledging organisation. And this year, what I wanted to do and to bring into it when I joined was to basically get out there a bit more and let people know that there are eleven people on this. It's not just it's not just the words fan advisory board it's not just something that you can you know throw a lot of abuse out which was happening last year and um, try to get our names and faces out there a little bit more and, and get people to realize that we're just 11 evertonians just like any other no more qualified to be on this than anyone else so it is open to everybody so yeah have a look have a read and uh, if you fancy having a go then yeah step up mm. and obviously you meant you mentioned the uh like the kind of abuse there and obviously i know firsthand that when when you were like a, applying to join or whatever, you said that one of the main goals you wanted to achieve was kind of ch- altering that perception a little bit. And obviously, I've seen firsthand at the at the drop ins at St Luke's that you know more and more people are coming up to you and talking and 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 just saying how how good a job you're doing. And I think the perception on online has has, has shifted a lot as well over the past year. So like I say, you've you've kind of achieved that that main aim, I guess you could say. So. Is it, I, I guess my point is like really is it would you say it's quite a rewarding role overall um yeah yes and no yes and i mean you know it's it's difficult really I, when I, when i first came into it i i was quite cynical about it myself i wasn't really sure it was quite new um and obviously there was quite a few um you know bits of banter thrown around last year about you know the in the club's pocket just a spokesperson for the club and stuff like that i didn't really know anyone that was on the fab other than i sort of knew dave kelly a little bit from the um from the food banks and from his past association with the blue union i hadn't actually met him before or, or, or sort of knew him i knew him to say hello to with the food bank that was about it but i do know that dave is effectively a troublemaker and and, and if and, and i knew that if if dave was allowed to be on the fab then it had to be legit because you know i think they've probably been blacklisted off from by the club several times over the years for for you know for whatever actions he's done against whether it be against kirby or against anything else you know so i think that sort of made it look to me as if it was genuine but i did also have in the back of my mind that i knew that the premier league were looking at trying to um you know say say to say to the government we don't need a regulator look we're listening to the fans so i, th- I wasn't sure if fan advisory boards were just a, a lip service sort of thing um and obviously i didn't know the people that were on them either i wasn't sure you know there was lots of things thrown around last year about people's egos and just wanting it because graham sharp was on the board last year they just wanted to meet graham sharp and all sorts of crap like that um and it's not like that at all it is genuinely just 11 evertonians that just want to do down want to do better for the club so um so yeah, I, I I went into it sort of fifty fifty about the the league and Everton's um, concept of it as whether whether they were just literally a tick box exercise. Um, but I very quickly realised it doesn't really matter whether they think it's a tick box exercise. Is what we think because they've opened the door. So let's kick it in and let's let's take advantage of this opportunity. Um, and I like to think we have. I mean, obviously we've the, the main things I'm, I'm probably most proud of that the Fab have done. Um, is uh, is to do with the appeals and to do with the uh, you know the hearings and all that sort of thing and getting getting and this was not me by the way this was the other people in the fab that have got other expertise in and they've got legal and, and government contacts and stuff like that um, to basically put in the documentation that we did into those hearings and to you know represent the fans and to show the impact it was having on the club and stuff like that I thought was I thought was amazing and it was and, you know it's nothing to do with me individually but it just goes to show that when you've got power and you've got connections and you've got the ability to actually do that and you're getting more of a voice then you know fan power does matter and um as i say we're trying to help other fabs as well because we're one of the most advanced fabs in the uh in the premier league because we started earlier than everyone else um, ourselves and the other lot across the far park uh brighton as well are doing quite well they're they're independent as well but we are trying to help everyone up with that because it helps football overall to have that fan voice you've got to have the fan voice involved um, so I'm pleased that we've been able to do that, I think. And and yeah, I think you're right that 
we don't get as much abuse as we do now but what i'm finding more is that if we do other people are shouting them down we don't have to defend ourselves other people are, are sort of speaking up for us as well which is massive for us mm. and yeah i guess um talking about some of the work that you do i guess another um, big thing that's been going on this last year is this kind of i guess three pronged attack i guess you could call it about the um about the takeover specifically addressed to Bar Mashiri 777 and the Premier League. And of course you um you issued a statement on uh May the eighth. Um so just just want to kind of talk through that really and what the uh what the um reasoning behind that was and what you were hoping to achieve really. Yeah so the May the eighth one was was um was basically the fact that we'd we'd written to um Fahad Mashiri. We kind of we kind of new and again this is sort of something you've you've sort of got to get used to uh, things move so quickly um and you might be preparing to do one thing something will happen at the club or in the media or something like that and all of a sudden you've got to shift the focus so what we tried to do is we tried to preempt that so we were looking in sort of early march we're sort of thinking as it's looking as if we're sort of you know we're going to be hopefully getting towards safety. It's looking like the appeal thing has calmed down because the appeal was obviously the main focus. As soon as we got the 10 points deducted, everyone's focus was on that, which when the club's getting taken over is mental when you think about it. That's, you know, that, that's enormous for the club and it should that should have been the main focus. But everyone was looking at these 10 points. So we had a lot of work to do with that. But in March, we sort of thought, well, this is going to die down at this point and people's focus is going to come back on 777 and what's going on with it because it was supposed to be sorted out in December. You know, when we, when Dave Kelly first met with 777 in late September, they said it's going to take about 12 weeks, which should have been mid-December. The fact that it had gone on and on and on, we wanted to start trying to get some answers. So in March, we wrote to, as you say, the the the, the three legs of the tripod, if you like, uh, Mishiri 777 and, and the Premier League because they're the ones that are in the hole up because obviously the situation is the seven the 777 have been told by the premier league you need to pass these pieces of criteria and that's it it just sits there and it goes on and on and on so the idea was that we were trying to get a response from that the responses we got back as we said in, in that statement on may the 8th were, were were not great they were quite predictable you know we've got to wait till it's done 777 josh wonder came back and said yeah we'll, we'll get back to you when it's done um Mishiri said oh great thank you very much for contacting me lovely yes I'd love to have a meeting with you I'll chat with you great and um, yeah well I still think 777 are the right people great and, and that was that art. and then the Premier League was actually probably the most useful answer because it came back with us and and it clarified the situation which is that unless 777 um fall foul of these what they call disqualifying events that the Premier League have in their rules then immediately rules them out as if they get past that then they just sit in the in this in this pot where they they can just keep coming back and saying, oh well, you know, uh, what about now? And the Premier League saying, no, you, you haven't ticked all the boxes. I'm like, all right, okay, cool. But they can't ever say to them, that's it forever now. So there's no end to it. So the end needed to be from either Mashiri and still needs to be from Mashiri or from Seven Seven Seven. They need to decide that they're going to bring that process to an end. And it was basically giving that a shove to try and find out so what's going on now and i think by the time we put that statement out on may the 8th the shareholders association just slightly beat us to it because they had a meeting the day before and they put their statement out um and they had um basically we'd come to the decision that that the 777 thing just wasn't going to happen all these stories were coming out uh, we've had stories right the way through about them um and it just came to the point that we just wanted to make that statement to say uh, Mr. Mashiri needs to call it to an end and just look for someone else to basically take us over. Hmm. And of course, now you've announced that um, you are going to be meeting with Mr. Mashiri next week. Um, and so, uh, I, I obviously that's going to be the uh, the main focus of attention. Um, wanting to apply this pressure, I guess. But um, just what sort of questions do you think you're going to be posing him, and uh, what sort of answers do you reckon you, you um, you're expecting to receive? Well, I'd say we, we wrote to the club um, again on the back of it. We, we asked for a, an emergency meeting with them. Um, and as part of that, we sort of sent over some of our concerns about what was going on. And we asked them to to clarify, obviously, you know, the word, you know, there's loads of administration and liquidation and all these sort of scary words have been sort of circulated. So we asked them um, what, you know, what, what the, what's the truth of that, really? And can you actually give us any clarification or, or can you yourselves actually communicate? That would be nice, wouldn't it? If Everton actually came out and made a statement about it all. 
Um, so we did get a response back to that earlier this week, um, and we put that other statement out as well, um, which basically didn't mention the administration word, which we will be going. That, that's one of the key questions that we will obviously be asking about. You know, is the club in danger of going into administration? Um, but we also got a little bit of a clarification of not not necessarily anything groundbreakingly new, but the actual sort of facts rather than rumour and gossip and stuff like that, talking about how much money 777 have put in so far, um, about the fact that there is an agreement in place that is now going to you know, last until the 31st of, of, of May, um, when that's apparently going to be the deadline by which 777 needs to complete the, the takeover. But it also said that they there are plans in place to start listening to other people as well. So it was a good update wasn't overly you know you know interesting as to what we were going to say but obviously we have got a list of questions that we are hoping to ask Mr Mashiri uh, himself um, next week it's still quite woolly it's got to be said we know that we're uh, supposed to be meeting him on 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 Monday um that's the date that we've been given we first asked to meet with him back in February so we are quite disappointed that it's taken until uh, what's going to be the 20th of May the day after the season ends where um, Mr. Mishiri is first engaging with us because the meetings that we have with the club, um, Colin Chong, uh, the CEO, the interim CEO, is at those meetings. But we've had no interaction whatsoever with Mr. Mishiri, um this season or pretty much last last year, I, I don't think either. Um, but yeah, so we're looking forward to actually being, being able to get into a room with him and, um, and, and being able to try and find some answers for the fans. Mm. And and you say about answers for the fans, um, when, when can supporters expect to hear um, about what was discussed? Well, uh, again, it is quite woolly at the moment. I mean, the, the the one thing that you do have to take into account, we all have to take into account, is that we have signed NDAs. So um, it's not always the case that we can just verbatim come out. You know, it's not it's not going to be like uh, there was a there was a session with uh, the the former chairman Jazz last year that was recorded, which was a, basically you know, you know questions and answers that the that the fab had collated from the fans and then went and asked Mister Mashiri. That was all quite stage managed. I have to say that was my first interaction with the fab when i wasn't on the fab last year because i thought that looked it, it didn't look great the club looked like they'd, they'd sort of you know wangled it a bit it didn't even look like jazz and five machine were in the same room um and I, I i you know cast a few aspersions on that and jazz actually got in touch with me and sent a picture of him with mr mishiri and stuff like that to prove that he had actually met him now we're quite wary of 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 that being the case. You know, we're not going there to get selfies with him. We're not going there to, you know, to say, oh, look, it's Fahim Mishiri. Aren't we important? We get to talk to him. We're going there to get answers. We're not, we're not, we're not going to big it up and everything like that. And, and to be fair to him, neither did Jazz. Jazz went there to just ask the questions that the fans had had, had asked him to answer. Um, but that was not really. It, it wasn't really what the fab wanted to achieve with with that with this we're hoping that we're going to be able to get some answers um and we're hoping that we're going to be able to report back but i can't say with any certainty as to when that will be or what that will be but um obviously as we always try to do we will try to report back as much as we can to the fab uh, to the fans um as quickly as we can you know mm. um and as you touched on before um the fab are always um like kind of thinking about that next step really and like what's going to be happening in the future. So is there anything you can tell us about what, what the FAB's next steps are and what they're going to be looking to prioritise going forward? We've got a lot going on, it's got to be said. Um, I say the, the, the analogy I always use, you'll have heard it a million times this season, is the house on fire and we've got a water pistol. It's, it's really difficult because there are all different levels with it, of course, because we've got... Um, from the, starting with the fab, we've got our own internal structure and our own internal processes. There's eleven of us, and we're we're always trying to improve them as well. The way that we communicate, uh, you know, between us and that sort of thing, and that's all boring stuff that the fans don't need to hear about. But it all needs to happen. That's that's what I would say in in you know in defence of the fab last year. All of that was still going on, so they were still getting a website set up and email addresses and doing all that admin sort of stuff, which is why the communication to the fabs to the fans probably wasn't the best but this year that's why we've tried to improve that because now we, we've got a little bit more capacity to be able to do that and to be able to keep the fans updated with what we are doing so internally we want to make our own improvements to the fab then they've obviously got Everton specific issues so we want to be sort of you know focusing on making sure that we're not going to breach PSR again so we want to be asking the club questions about those sort of things obviously we've got transition into the new stadium we've got a lot of um, a lot of people asking us in our drop-in sessions at St Luke's about uh, you know season tickets 
tickets and and uh, and memberships and things like that and saying about you know that everyone wants to be at that last game at Goodison next year and and there's people complaining about the fact that there's no sort of loyalty embedded into the membership scheme you're either a member or you're not and you get first dibs on the on the resale tickets and that's that but people want to be looking at you know well surely there should be loyalty in that you you know what people have bought why why can someone that's a member that's never bought a ticket have the same chance of getting a getting a, a, a match ticket than someone who's been going for the last five years as a member, you know. So little bits and bobs like that, they're, they're the sort of things that, that fans are coming to us and asking us to take to the club. Um, so there's there's Everton-specific issues, and I say there's a lot of those. And then there's got the wider football sort of issues. So then we're talking about, you know, talking to other fabs and trying to improve our relationships with them, trying to help them with all the bumps and hurdles that we've come across to try to help guide them through. Um, and we can learn from other fabs as well as to what they're, what they're doing and get some, pinch some ideas from them. Um, and then you've got football as a whole, because obviously you've got um, things like the, uh, the 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 bill going through thing at the moment for, for the independent regulator of football. We've, we've been very vocal on that. We've tried to make sure, and that's not an Everton thing. That's a football thing where we're trying to get all fans involved. We put out another statement yesterday where, um, the the first hearing of the football governance bill um, yesterday in, in in parliament was the first the, the first meeting of the committee to discuss that. So we want to have a say in that, and we want to make sure that we're making sure that that regulator, when it comes in, has got some teeth, and that things like PSR at the moment are not involved in that. So what well, you know, everything that we've been through this season with with you know a complete lack of a lack of any kind of structure to where you know you've got inconsistent judgments for us for forest for the appeal for all of that that all that's all going to continue based on that bill at the moment because the premier league are going to keep hold of psr so we want we want to try and get some amendments made to that bill so that's not an everton thing but it obviously it will affect everton so we're trying to operate at a lot of different levels and considering there's only 11 of us and it's a part-time job it's a lot but they're the sort of things that we've got on our plate at the moment and i'm sure everton being everton that there'll be uh, other things coming coming on to that as well yeah and uh like you say you're um you're always being like you know asked asked questions by supporters and things that you'd um like that they're asking for you to try and address but i guess are there any sort of questions that you yourself would like to pose back in the other opposite direction towards um supporters um, well, we always want sort of feedback on on what we think. As I say, you mentioned it has been really gratifying that we have had you know a lot of people just just stopping at the um, the drop ins at St Luke's, and people don't know what that is. Um, the, there's basically the, the the church at the corner of Goodison upstairs there, the, the Everton Heritage Society. Um, they've got a load of like Evertonia in there. There's old kits, there's programs, there's all sorts of stuff up there. If you've never been up there um, pre match, then make sure you go up there and go and check that all out. Um, and what we thought earlier in the season, we, we, we're constantly, part of our remit is to listen to the fans. So we've held um, online meetings um, with the UK-based supporters, with supporters based in the Americas, with supporters based in Europe, and with supporters based in Asia, South Pacific. Um, we have we have online sessions with those. We've had in-person meetings where we've had people come in and talking to us because we've got to listen to the fans. It can't just be what the 11 of us want to work on. We've got to listen to the fans and find out what issues are important to the fans. So what I would ask of the fans is basically, you know, what what sort of a football club do you want? What are the issues that that matter to you, um, whether you're a match-going supporter, whether you're a supporter overseas, you're watching from afar, it doesn't matter. If you're an Evertonian, you're an Evertonian. And that's a really, really clear message. We had a lot of hassle with that a couple of months ago, um, particularly with the, the, the bomb of the way game with, with, with people accusing people of not, you know, not being Evertonian enough. It's nonsense. If you're an Evertonian, you're an Evertonian. It doesn't matter where you live, where you come from, what your postcode is. It doesn't matter. If you're blue, you're blue. So um, we want to hear from El from all Evertonians and find out, you know, what they want and what they want of us. Uh, we want their feedback, good and bad. We all, all welcome. They can contact us via the website. They can contact us via our Twitter. We've got the the bio at the top and things like that. Um, and they can come to the drop ins at St Luke's pre match, which again we're going to be starting up next season as well. So um, all I would say is, yeah, just. Um, um, you know, let us know what you think and um, anything that you that you want to know, and, and and just get involved. Really, you know, spread awareness of of what the fab is. If you if you someone that's sitting next to you in good sort of moaning about something all the time, then tell him to come and let us know rather than just moaning to you about it. You know, because you know you can't do anything about it, but we might be able to. Um, and the last thing I would really just say is is that you know just just 
acknowledge the fact that you know we are not you know experts in what we're doing we are just evertonians that want to try to help out a little bit you know i've ended up being sort of like the comms lead this this season when i don't know anything about communications i'm not a broadcaster in any way i'm, I'm a computer programmer you know i don't really know what i'm doing just sort of winging it really and, and trying to help out and being a little bit more techy than the rest of them but we all just sort of muck in and we all have our strengths here and there and that but um yeah i would just ask to, to take that into account we're just 11 evertonians and just want to see a better evertonian uh, better everton so um so yeah bear with us mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, and yeah, uh, I feel like that's a, um, a good place to end it there, really. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. And, uh, you know, obviously, um, I'm quite I'm a little bit biased, but uh, it, is, um, it is very good work that you're doing, I'd say. So, uh, um, yeah, uh, just yeah, keep it up, I guess. And um, uh, but yeah, uh, that's all we've um, got time for today. So uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed. Um, make sure you follow the Fan Advisory Board on all their socials. Um, which you can find um, easily enough online. And uh, subscribe to the Toffee Blues channel for more Everton content. And we will see you in the next video. Cheers.